This is a little bonus episode in the TCP server series. I will use my blue pill here to connect to a quick pad. So I'll add the quick pad panel. Let me search up here, quick pad. And this is a nice little panel, which is, uh, by the way, you can find all our panels here. If you go to darkroomscarhead.com, you click controllers, you can browse through all our wonderful panels. You can see high resolution images of them and and check out the various components that they have so that you can pick your form factor control panel for broadcast applications. And the one that I was thinking about today would be this one, the quick pad, which has basically two encoders and 10 buttons and displays for all of these. So uh, it's a real nice handheld little device. And over the ethernet connection that it has, PoE powered, it will connect to the blue pill server here. Of course, we'll just use it as a um, virtual panel in this demonstration and create a custom configuration. So TCP server test. I will also add the TCP server device here. So TCP server, I'll just type that in again and add it as a device that we can talk to. It is available on this port. That's all great. Like this. All right. And that means actually right now I could connect to the IP address of my blue pill, which is this IP address up here. And then on the port, we just enter it like that. If I type list, you see, yep, I have some feedback coming. I'll actually reset it real quick so that it's just absolutely blank. And uh, yeah, for the fun of it, I'll just quickly set up another client because one cool thing about the TCP server is that you can have multiple clients connected to it. So if you make changes in one client, it will reflect in the other one and you can have thereby multiple devices connected to your blue pill. Now let's go into configuration because this is where the excitement is. And um, in the configuration today, we are working in a better environment. We are working on an approach to configuration based on pages. So you can basically add new pages here. And this is something we'll look far more into in the near future. We are really excited about this approach, which is the way that you would know how to configure a Stream Deck, for instance. So you can have multiple pages and on each of these pages, you can place uh, various types of behaviors. And we will now on this button we just selected, we'll pick a behavior from the TCP server that I just um, set up here. So we will, for instance, set an integer. So if we choose this one, basically here for the device index, we'll just type in one. And that is the device index we have right there. So if I go back here, you'll see it, it says one. Actually, it should be pre-filled, but that's a bug. So, oh, sorry. Um, just quickly set it up. Then the number of integer that we want to uh, manipulate, let's say number five, and then we can put in the value that we want to give it 45. All right, so now we have a button here that has been pre-configured by this action or this behavior called set integer that we have added since the previous video so that you, you see the value here. You also see a different title up there. And let me just quickly put this set integer on another button next to and just type in the value 50 and uh, pick the number again, five, of course, yes. And that's it. So now I go into simulation mode and you can see 45, 50, 45, 50. And there is already reflection on the button. So it highlights when that value is selected and the same over here. But notice also the connected clients over here, integer number five has the value 50 or 45 illustrated over in the TCP clients that I've connected to the TCP server. And of course, as I said, I can change the value from over there. Notice that it will reflect down here. And those two will also reflect it by simply disabling their highlight because that value is neither 45 nor 50. Now we can also, if we, yeah, we need to go over there to configure. We can also uh, change the integer. So if I set this one, change integer number five, then the function I get out of that is base. Oops, that was the wrong one. Let's just pick this. So basically that's a function that will iterate over the values. If you use the left edge and the right edge, you can use those. And actually it is also compatible with almost any hardware component you can imagine. So if we um, use it for the encoder, we could apply it on the encoder up here. Then it also has, let me see, change integer right there. Yes, number five, thank you, back to simulation mode. And you can see this would correspond to turning an encoder left and right. And if I, I think press and hold, no, actually not. Yeah, okay, so it resets the value as well because it has a built-in reset function that goes to the value zero if you press and hold it for a moment. There's also this one called change integer fast because sometimes you have large value ranges for your integers and you want to be able to change them fast. And on encoders, 
you can click it and then you have little, this little uh, course mode icon. And if I if I enable that, you see that it actually increases or decreases the values in steps of 10 instead, instead of uh, steps of, of one. Now I've disabled it again and I'm back in fine mode. And the same is actually true on the four way button because if you press the, okay, now we need to reconfigure the four way button because of course that's still integer, uh, change integer um, standard and not fast. So if I go down here, you see that little course find mode icon is also enabled here. So now I can also on this one change it uh, fast or not. But these, this is actually independent between these two. It's just a matter of the behavior, how that component four way button or encoder is interacting with the uh, register, the integer in this case that we have associated with it. So those are independent, but they are just changing the same value. That's quite exciting. Uh, don't forget that we have this integer, cool integer range um, that we can set integer range for number five equals, uh, let's say, 0 to colon 20. Okay, so we go from 0 to 20. And that means as we are now manipulating the value that we go all the way up to 20. And that's it. And if we go the other way, we can go down to zero. And that's it. And actually, if I enable course mode, you can see that I can do this in just a few clicks. Okay, so we can also in addition to this do the same for booleans. So I can set a boolean. Like let's let's take boolean number 10. I can set it to on. I could click this one set boolean next to and I would say boolean number 10. I would set the value to off. So let's just try this one out. Okay, on, off, on, off. So I just made that on button off button right here. And then you can color code them if you want. You could go in here actually to pick the color of this one. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you click it, show more additional feedback, set the color, and then you just pick any color that you want this one to light up in so that that color, that button is colored differently. And um, I could also make a toggle button out of this. So I would basically choose toggle boolean and then I would say boolean number 10. Yes. And then I click here and you see on, off, on, off. So that is, again, it's the same register and you can see the changes over there. One cool thing about these things is that I also integrated the integer, boolean, and option list titles that I was talking about. So check this one out. We have bool title colon 10 equals, hey, you, all right? So that title is now imported. So basically I'm looking, if there's a title, then I'll use it. Otherwise I'll just say boolean number 10. So in this way you could set up Right, you know, um, like parameters from your external TCP client, as we discussed in the first video. So that's that's quite cool. But these um, out of the box one click behaviors will help you to get started real quick because you don't have to go in and set the parameters up by default as we show, showed you in the previous video. Well, you can always do that. But the idea of the one click behaviors is that you have the most used actions ready to just throw onto a button, encoder, fader, joystick, whatever. And then finally, the option lists. Let's take a look at those. Uh, well, I could do the same for the integers. So yeah, let's just quickly do that. Int title number five equals my number. Okay, so you get the idea. Yes, I'm sure you do. Now let's click this guy and let's set an option. Okay, so I could take um, option number 30. And um, so it's going to set an option to us. Ah, okay, this is where I have a bug in the UI. There has to be a field right there where I can set the option number. Okay, so I won't be able to actually show you that. But then let's let me instead change option. So I'll just pick this one instead. And uh, for that to work. So that's still option number 30. Okay, let's just click this one. So you can see that I'm going through basically cycling through the options that exist. Let me quickly go over here and then Let's make that limitation option labels number 30 equals and then apple pears bananas. Okay. And that means now we have these three options we can go forth and back that we have inserted here. And once again, I can option title 30 fruits, favorite fruits. All right. And then the final thing that I want to show you is the timer where we also have an option set timer right there. And the timer was this binary register that when you set it with a value, it will go through 
for that number of milliseconds you set and then automatically fall back to false. And that could be useful for various things. So let's just check this out really quick. Let's take timer number one. And then we set the timeout value to 2000 milliseconds. Okay. So let's try this. Click. Da da da. Boom. Back to off. Click. 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 Last click. 2000 milliseconds and it's off. So that was the timers. This is basically super exciting because it gives you a way using this UI to quickly add these functionalities that are assumed to be most used. You're always able to go into show more if you want to add colors, which would be a very popular option to just pick a color for your button when it's highlighted like I just did. And you can also overwrite titles, title font size, text lines. You can do all kinds of things. You can manipulate every single aspect. But the whole point is that you have a quick way to get started on the most useful things that you want to do. The second thing that we'll look more into in other videos, super exciting, is that this paging paradigm basically means that you can go, I just put a lot of stuff on the background page, but you can have pages on top of that and you can create navigation to go between pages very easily in this way so that you can have pages and pages and pages of functionality. And of course, you want to do this with your ATEM switches and cameras and whatnot, but that is shown in other videos. So stay tuned. We have a lot of content in YouTube already, so you can go into that, but you will also see a lot of content coming up pretty soon about the whole uh, page-based navigation paradigm that we are introducing inside of Reactor.